Now that we understand the concept of optical activity, let's, let's do a few different calculations. So if you take 0.3 grams of natural cholesterol and dissolve it in 15 milliliters of chloroform and put it in a 10 centimeter long tube, the observed rotation will be negative 0.63. Calculate the specific rotation of cholesterol. Well, we saw in the last video that the specific rotation is related to the observed rotation. And we accounted for concentration and also path length, the length of the tube. And we said that the concentration should be in grams per milliliters. And the path length should be in decimeters. So that needs to be in decimeters here. And this is just a way of standardizing uh, everything so that we can compare molecules in terms of their specific rotations to make the specific rotation a physical constant. So let's, let's see what numbers we can plug in here. So let's look at our problem. Um, the observed rotation of cholesterol is negative 0.63 degrees. So I can go ahead and put in negative 0.63 degrees here. And then I'm going to divide that by the concentration, which is in grams per milliliter. So I have 0.3 grams, 15 milliliters. So 0.3 grams, so that's 0.3, divided by 15 milliliters. And my path length, it's 10 centimeters. 10 centimeters is equal to one decimeter. So I can go ahead and put one decimeter in here. And obviously, it's a very simple calculation. And when you do this calculation, you will get negative 31.5. So cholesterol will rotate light to the left. And this is the specific rotation. So let's go ahead and specify the temperature, which was 20 degrees. And let's say it was sodium. So there's the D line uh, for sodium right there. So pretty simple calculation. Let's look at another type of calculation for optical activity. And this calculation will allow us to figure out what's called the optical purity of your sample, otherwise called the enantiomeric excess. So let's, let's look at optical purity. So sometimes it's called optical purity. And sometimes you'll see it's called the enantiomeric excess. So enantiomeric excess. And let's look at the calculation. So the percent enantiomeric excess is equal to the observed specific rotation of a compound. And then you divide that by the specific rotation of the pure enantiomer, of the pure enantiomer. And to get a percentage, you need to multiply this by 100. So let's look at a problem where we have to use the concept of enantiomeric excess. So let's look at this problem right here. A chemist makes R carbone, but suspects that the product is contaminated with S carbone. And that's pretty easy because of the different smells that we talked about in the last video. The specific rotation, uh, we have a spelling mistake here. So let me go ahead and put in a T. The specific rotation of the product is is minus 50. Calculate the percent enantiomeric excess of the product. Well, to find the percent enantiomeric excess of the product, we need to know the specific rotation of the pure enantiomer. And our goal is to make R carbone. R carbone smells like spearmint. So I need to know the specific rotation of R carbone. We talked about that in the last video. So the specific rotation of R carbone at 20 degrees is negative 61. So when, when, uh, when the chemist did his experiment, he got a specific rotation of negative 50. So it makes sense that it's not completely R carbone. So let's use this formula to calculate the enantiomeric excess that this chemist actually got. So we need the, uh, the observed specific rotation, which was the one done in the lab, and, and that's minus 50. And then the actual is negative 61 of the pure enantiomer. So let's plug in those numbers. So we have the observed, the percent enantiomeric excess is equal to, 
uh, the observed, which is what we, which is what the chemist got when he did his experiment, divided by the actual, which the actual is minus 61, and multiply that by 100 to get a percentage. So this gives you 82% enantiomeric excess, and we're talking about the R enantiomer. So this is an 82% excess, uh, excess of the R enantiomer. Or you could say this is 82% opti optically pure. Now, what if we wanted to know the actual percentage of R and S carbone in that final reaction mixture? Well, you would think to yourself, uh, what what numbers add up to equal 100% and when you subtract one from the other you're going to get 82%. Well, if you think about it, if you if you had 91% of something and 9% of something else, that difference of course, 91 minus 9 is equal to 82%. So, just thinking about it, you would have to have a mixture of 91% R and 9% S and that would give you an enantiomeric excess of 82%. So this is what the chemist made, right? He has a he has a mixture of 91% R enantiomer and 9% S enantiomer. So his product is contaminated a little bit with the unwanted enantiomer. What about if the chemist uh, did this reaction again and and he changed some reaction conditions and and this time he got he got minus 61 for his final specific rotation. Well, of course, the uh, the R carbone enantiomer has minus 61, so obviously this is extremely simple math, and you would get 100% 100% excess R, meaning it's 100% optically pure. Obviously, implying that the chemist now has 100% R and 0% S, so he has exactly what he's looking for: pure R carbone.